two of the headline players for Suning and Lucky Future here, Jing and Yu Ying, battling out here at the start of week six. Uh, both players have Demon Hunter, Druid and Warrior, and Yu Ying has the Priest, and Jing has the Highlander Hunter. Both Demon Hunters are banned, we are seeing that more and more often now in this last hero standing format. And we're going to get the Druid versus the Priest to start off with. And as always, we talk about this matchup in terms of Breath of the Infinite being a massive, massive deal. That is because this is the spell version of the Druid. And so being able to get through the Breath just leaves the small matter of having to deal with the Mount Seller. This might look like a weird pickup, but this is big for Yu Ying, this Mind Games. This, I believe, was invented by Blue. I should look that up. Um, his teammate. But basically it's for this matchup. Druid doesn't play many minions at all. And they're all worth stealing. Just the Mount Seller and the Asira. Obviously the Asira doesn't get its battle cry effect. So it's not too fantastic. This is a 412 chunky thing that you have to get rid of. And Exotic Mount Seller of course. Absolutely spectacular here for the Priest. Talking of which, there goes a Mount Seller for Jing. Just straight in the bin. So Yu Ying has to decide here what he wants to do on turn two. The opportunity to play the Sethek is turned down. Would rather say that for some value later on. This can become a matchup where you need to find extra removal. Uh, next turn will be somewhat more interesting though as he can play the Sethek down to challenge the potential Glowfly Swarm of course. I'm talking about a card that currently isn't even in Jing's hand, but it's all that Yu Ying will be thinking about. How does he stop Glowfly's next turn? So Sethek challenges one of them, but there will be six should Jing play the Glowfly Swarm. And that might just be too many to deal with. So wondering how Yu Ying chooses to go for this. He could play Madame Lazul and try and steal a Crystal Power or something like that, Wrath, whatever. But maybe he has other things in store. Just having a quick look for something here. Nope, can't find it. So... I wonder if he could try and steal more things with Thought Steal. Could also just rip the Mind Games and have a big minion in play. Of course that takes away the chance to time rip on five but Let's see what he goes for. He's going to go for the mind games by the look of it. So I think there's one in zero, one mount seller left, one got discarded. He does get the mount seller. Jing sort of unaccepting of this play. But it's why it's in the deck it is part of Lucky Future's actual setup to bring this card. And this is exactly why. And it is Last Hero Standing as well, so playing the Priest with the ability to be able to target Druid in this manner is more likely. And talking of the Mind Games, it looks like he won the Mind Games in what to queue first. I think Jing may have decided this Priest was here to take on the Druid and try to get it out of the way. Maybe Yu Ying just second guessed that a little bit. We do see a lot of people opening with Druid anyway. As it's kind of the utility deck. It's not a massive counter to anything. It's not massively countered by anything. Apart from maybe Demon Hunter which is banned. It doesn't like Warrior in my opinion. I will stick by that opinion as well. I've played enough of that matchup to think that Warrior is just favoured. Changes a bit when you get the Emerald Explorers, admittedly, but there are none here. And Jing has made the executive decision to just go all in here, getting rid of this Mount Seller. He does have the ability to innovate into Overflow next turn to recover the cards. But that's going to enable Yu Ying to now ramp himself and playing against Priest is almost as infuriating as playing against Druid Jing. I nearly feel for you. But not quite. 
Nothing against Jing, by the way, for those who misinterpret that statement. Just, you know, Druid does all those nasty things to you that you can't reply to, so watching the priest sort of get its own back is something I find amusing. Right, Yu Ying now going to have to populate the board. Very real threats of next turn facing a full board. So now he does surely need to start populating. He's done a very good job so far of not having to populate. But now I would imagine it's time for Sethek and Shield of Galakon, maybe? Seems like that would set up decent options. Or maybe Power of the Wild as a minion. Although, should he... Yeah, he's going to go this way because the Power of the Wild can be used to buff the 1-2 next turn. And this is actually putting on some pressure as well as being defensive. Glowfly Swarm. Jing just sees a wall of seven cards and he's assuming that there will be uh, the Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild? Breath of the Infinite. Dual classes aren't out yet, but soon. Breath of the Infinite, of course. We can see it's not actually an issue. Does he have any other plays, though? That's the question in this position. It's like, no matter how much he thinks about what the problems of this are, does he actually have a choice? And then the choice now is, do you buff them? And I think you do. Get them out of breath range. It also gets them out of the range of the minions on the board as well. And then the further question is, do you want to iron bark? And that's a tougher one because you want to save this iron bark for the final mount seller, should you pick it up. But yeah, buffing them just makes sense. And a reminder that there is still a mount seller left. Because it is a copy that is stolen from your opponent with the mind games. Imagine how ridiculous it would be if it wasn't a copy. You just ruin the game plan of like certain like Mechathune decks. You just steal the Mechathune. Oh, game over. So yeah, that would be a bit of a overpowered mechanic. So it's done this way. Well, there's ways of getting rid of most of this for you, Ying problem he's going to have is working out where he wants to be after the turn. If he's going to power the wild, there's a lot of minions he could buff his, his own way, as long as he doesn't die. Like, he could just make a pretty giant board. Might be trying to work out the best way to get the Wretched Reclaimer thrown in there. This is sort of where I was looking as well. Just buffing. But I thought he might try and get more minions up there. Maybe get the Psychic Conjurer buffed as well. But he felt it was more important to do it this way. Get some use out of the Sethek. Get some healing done. And I think this makes a lot of sense now. I've seen it in action. Keeps the score on board as three minions versus three minions. Just trying desperately to keep this control and he so far is managing it. It is amazing how Druid keeps coming at you. Remember when the mind game was played on turn 3, Jing had to spend up so many resources killing off that mount seller. Yet here he is, 3 or 4 turns later with a full hand, a level board and multiple options. Well, Yu Ying didn't kill off the last lot of stuff. So another Glowfly is possible here. Obviously a bit different. Because Breath of the Infinite wouldn't have worked on the last board. Um, but it looks like Jing is making space to go for another Glowfly Swarm here. No, he is not. Just 
protecting his one minion, trying to find that mount seller for the big win. Deciding that the Breath of the Infinite is just... There it is, as well. Rewarded for playing around the card. It always looks weird when you're watching both sides and somebody just doesn't put down the winning card. But this is why... He feels that there was just no chance that Breath wasn't in hand, or very little chance. And this is correct. It's not second-guessing himself. That he had no reason to believe it was or wasn't there. And so you just do the maths and the opponent's got loads of cards, some of which have been there for some time. Good chance it was in hand. But four cards left and not finding his Mount Seller or his Asira. It's a pretty rough deal. I believe only one Mount Seller was discarded. Casters have been known to miss the occasional thing there, but it does like Jing just isn't getting the draw required. Now Yu Ying plays the Lazul. Will his own Glowfly Swarm be good here? He has six spells in hand. I might have been tempted. Takes his own Savage Roar instead, which is removal. And gets a mini board set up. Well, Jingy just hasn't drawn anything to do. Which is very silly of him. Three cards left and he's not on 10 mana yet. That's also not very Druid-like. I think once again it might be Glowfly Swarm and Power of the Wild. Glowfly Swarm and Soul of the Forest, I guess, is more sticky. Bog beam away a couple of these. And try and kill his opponent next turn. We can see that the answer is going to be Mass Dispel and Breath of the Infinite if he does go for this route. Whichever way he chooses to do it as well, the Mass Dispel will reduce them to two twos that can be blown up. But I don't think he wanted to go this way. It's just that having two minions in the bottom three cards has has kind of forced it upon him. And Yu Ying should be able to just clear up here. And slow Jing down. Although Jing surely will have something to do next turn with whatever comes off the top of his deck. New Ying in fantastic position here. So let's look ahead. Jing has left his Hunter and his Warrior. Let's keep an eye on the game, but obviously it looks like it's going to close. So you'll see the Hunter go into the Priest, have a good chance. And then we could end up with another Warrior versus Warrior mirror at the end if you play through all the possibilities here. Doesn't surprise me. Last hero standing, Warrior is the best deck. That certainly the best deck isn't getting banned, but I think it's the best deck overall. I haven't been moved from that opinion through six weeks of this so far. I do understand the Demon Hunter ban better than I did at the start. It is so versatile. But I just think Warrior is insanely good. It does have that weak spot against Priest, and Demon Hunter kind of has no weak spots, really, apart from the Warrior. So there's this weird thing where the two best decks in the format, one just beats the other pretty comprehensively, but doesn't get banned. But anyway, with Warrior being strong in Last Hero Standing, you'd expect those to be the, the crucial ones, best deck versus best deck. Loser doesn't get to play it again, winner does. And Weirdly, you sometimes find that that means it comes up in the fifth game like we did earlier today. However, a long way from there, as Jing did pick up that Mount Seller, but choosing not to use it, and instead get some ammo for it, I understand this, but that's pretty slow. And Yu Ying can just put a load of stuff on board here.
trying to work out the ramifications of a Murazond. He won't overdraw, so I don't see why not. Which of these cards? <laughs> Gets the savage draw. I think he knew that the Asir wasn't there. Yeah, now the Murazond. So he's going to end up on... Oh. Interesting. Okay. For some reason I was expecting it to... draw the cards, but of course he doesn't have to. He can just wait. makes perfect sense with the wild pyro in hand. Well Jing, this is the situation you played for, you knew it was coming, what's your plan? I mean the plan is to draw things in a better order to some degree. But it goes all the way back to that mind games, forcing Jing to use up so much early resources. As well as Fungal Fortunes, you know, discarding a Mount Seller early on, but that's natural wastage, that's the thing that does happen. So he should be able to get a whole room full of dragons here. Gonna need a Taunt one though, there's only a couple available, there's a 7-7 seven, seven, one, that I can never remember the name of. And also Emerald Explorer, and I think that's your lot. And he doesn't know about the Savage Rule, of course. He definitely doesn't know there's two of them. So this is a line that can win him the game. He's worked it pretty well, I must admit, to get to a point where he has a chance of winning the game. But despite the fact that this looks fantastic, these are not the dragons he's looking for. And Yu Ying is going to be able to go about his business of finishing off game one. Very strange game, that first game. And Jing can't believe it, but surely he can. Yu Ying has been playing this very slowly on purpose. He knows he's had a good hand all the way through. And LF take a 1-0 lead. not emergency yet I've said all the teams are basically on five and five give or take one win but Sunning going four and seven would be the start of something that would be a little bit worrying for me uh, you only have to finish not in the bottom two but so let me say there's only one win between all of the teams or two wins between all the teams from first to last but if you're the ones on four and seven and everybody else is five five with only three weeks left, so only six matches, seven after this one, then, yeah, you're starting to make it difficult for yourself. Well, Jing has picked up basically the perfect curve here. It's hard to give exact details, and plus he's got to work out whether he wants to coin out the Felmore or not. Which is always an interesting question for me. I think you should. But I understand that if you don't, you get to save the coin. Still has the 1, 2, 3 curve available. And this seems to be the preferred way more often than not these days. Obviously, this hunter is expected to take down the priest. And with this sort of hand, I wouldn't be betting against it. He has his own really good curve though. None of it really plays much around the current board though. Three health not the, the number he wants right now. Which is a bit unfortunate given this. Jing trying to work out, should he be going for 
don't know, wild growth would be the only reason to play Zeph here. You wouldn't want an animal companion because you have a Zixor anyway. You've got to be very, very careful with Zixor against Priest. You do not want to let the Priest steal it from you and put it in their own pool of potential cards. This is nice for Yu Ying. Doesn't allow him to get his Shadow Reaver down and have it survive with the freeze effect. But plenty of things can go wrong if he plays a spear, for instance. So, this is not easy work at all. Yeah, oh, go for the face. So he's saying, okay, if, if you shoot my Shadow Reaver and trade in, that's just a horrible looking Hearthstone turn and good for you. If you don't do that, your Felmore has a 50-50 of impaling itself on my Shadow Reaver. And I'll take those odds, because if that's out of the way, everything is looking a lot more tidy. It's actually quite difficult. Yeah. Jing taking the opportunity here to get this in his own graveyard. Value wise, this is a horrible looking play. So, if there was no other interactions happening in the game, this would be awful because he could have just shot it down and traded in and still had the Zixor in his hand. But the whole point is you're looking for an opportunity against Priest for that not to happen. You want it in your own graveyard, you want the Priest not to have it in theirs. It's such a weapon for the priest to use against you. Yu Ying now having the choice of playing two smaller minions to absorb the blow, the incoming blow, or whether to just play the, the Fate Weaver and get on with his life like you would normally in this position. And it would survive, at least it would survive the hit. Yeah, it tanks it, so Yu Ying does survive on 29 for the time being. The problem is with surviving against Hunter is what is happening in Jing's hand. Siamat, Dragon Queen Alex Straza, he already had Bran. He's already got Zephyrus, like, he's got all three Highlander cards. And the longer the game goes, the more the Hunter starts to be able to really exert masses of damage upon the Priest. But the priest taking one damage in the first four turns, especially given that Jing had a perfect 1-2-3 curve, absolutely wonderful position for Yu Ying to have got in so far. And with no really huge follow-ups apart from obviously Mind Flare cards, which is always a fantastic card. It's hard to see which way this one's going to fall at the moment, but for now, I would be just on the side of the Hunter and the big things. But although there are no answers in hand if you don't count Soul Mirror, because you've taken 8 from a King Crush by the time you cast it, you would imagine Yu Ying will draw into those time... Yeah, like that. The time rips and such like by the time it's turn 9. Plus he could have Galakron to remove stuff and so on. Obviously, what I said about King Crush applies to all of these, but when you've got multiple removals, it doesn't matter so much. I want to keep the development coming, you would think. Actually choosing to Mind Flare this. And going for maximum development. I thought maybe he'd just play the Tolvir and heal it, but this is so much harder to deal with. And Jing needs to exert pressure now, like... He's not cut out to be in a defensive mindset. If he could get 10 damage done in the next 3 or 4 turns, I'm not sure how he would do that. But he can start to put some pressure on Yu Ying with his higher end stuff. 
Zigzor Prime's a big deal. Soul Mirror, the only answer to that, of course, Yu Ying does have the Soul Mirror. Well, time ripping a 6 1 is not most people's idea of fun. But none of this is efficient. I guess you can play the Seth Oak and Death and see where he ends up. That might be the most efficient play, but losing the Shadow Word Death is a big deal. I've already talked about the the big cards that Jing will have access to. Yu Ying won't expect them all to be in hand, but he will expect a Bran or a Siamat or a Dragon Kirin to be there. It's kind of how the deck is built. You're supposed to have one of those cards at least by now. I mean, you're a third away through the deck and there's three cards you're worried about, maybe four, so... You know, the very quick math checks out that there would be one there. That being said, getting some value out of a Sethek, getting the board under control is also very tempting, but Yu Ying using a lot of patience here. Picks on a High Priest Ammo, it's not the worst case either to have minions sticking around against the Hunter. Well, Jing, it's time to do some moving. moving. Siamat seems like an obvious choice. The Felmore should come back in dormant, I believe. My Mind Flare card um, mechanics are a little bit rusty at times. If Jing He may just go face, you know, actually. The more I look at it, the more the CMAT's better for other things. So yeah. No dino traders today. Both King Squash we've seen through today's action have gone to the face. Remember last turn? When Yu Ying saved the death. Me too. Now seems to be a very good time to get the Sethek used. Well, I say that. I was just looking at the time bit because even though it uses up all the mana, oh, this is just so good if you get something else there. Yeah, it would have been more efficient basically. Yep, yeah, does come back in dormant. And Jing, another card gone. So, what's the best Siamat of Siamats here? I like Rush Wind Fury here. I just have a dangerous 6 4 that must be dealt with on the board. The rush is the easy, easy bit. He does go for the Divine Shield. Which I understand. But is a 6-6 that much harder to deal with than a 6-4 for the Priest? Is there much difference? I think I'd rather this be a 6-4 Wind Fury and be threatening lethal. I think Jing is going with the whole... He's just going to keep making big things until he wins aspect, which I understand. And therefore 6-6 six, is six, better with that mindset. But I am curious as to whether that was the right decision or not. Another tough turn for Yu Ying. Obviously he can time rip here. There's no no difficulty in making the turn not bad. The difficulty is in making the turn as good as it can be. He can't. Can he afford to take six? Not really. So time rip and heal, and he's desperately trying to find something better than that. And he thinks he has. Which is the counter attack. 
She so using this moment to say, you know, I think I can do you here. What Soul Mirror next turn? And anything that Jing does, you can Soul Mirror and have an 8-8 eight, eight left over. And he'll have the 5-4 Felmore as well. Try saying that quickly. Which sets up at a pretty close to two turn lethal. Interestingly enough. So Jing is going to deal with this. Well, I thought he was going to deal with his efforts. This is the play, the straightforward play, but this is the play that loses to Soul Mirror. Alright, maybe it doesn't lose to Soul Mirror if you trade the 6 6 in. But yeah, there's the issue, and that's what I thought might happen. Oh, okay! Then I can handle it. Choosing to get 6 damage now immediate. And this is why he didn't make a 6 4 Siamat as well, so the Felmore couldn't kill it off. Of course, he's done six less damage potentially. Soul Mirror survives though this way. And that's a big deal because his power cards have gone and there's still room for Yu Ying to clear another wide board. Maybe he might just start healing his own face here every turn. He needs to work out the difference in clock between healing his face or just putting minions out there. And he feels that buffing up the Sethek is a way to get his clock down by a turn without costing himself a turn of healing. He's still got to get through the Alexstrasza and the Zephyrus though. What does Zephyrus even give you here? I feel like... Jin could probably get this set up for two turn lethal if he wanted. It might involve rolling a huffer. But I think just play the storm hammer and hero power and launching things at face. If there's enough mana for tracking, which I think there is in that line, try and get another damage spell, a kill command or something. Maybe Alex Straza with the naught mana minions still. Get three big dragons. So he's going to go for the damage line. Let's see if he finds anything damaging. Unleash is fine if he's going this route. His opponent will... This is for next turn, most likely, not this turn. His opponent will... Um, put more stuff onto the board. Oh, he's playing the dragon to get more storm hammer swings. Yeah, he can do that. He's got enough mana to play all of the cards but the Alex next turn which is lethal in many worlds. Yu Ying trying to get as high as possible, recognising that that was a dig for something, and digs are not fun because they're usually for lethal. Looking very much like it's going to go to one game apiece here. What if we see him play Kronk so that it says, look, kill me next turn or I'm going to gain five more and then I'm going to kill you. Is digging for more healing. Gets more healing. What a superb play. And still gets the cronks down as well. Yeah, this is. I'm going to kill you in two turns. This is the plan. Getting enough health up not to die in those two turns with the Galakond. As well as developing a 6 6. The Grand Slam. Want that on an empty board if you can. It's not very good against this particular board. So I think... Is it going to be Zephyrus Brawl if he goes for Hounds? Looks like it. I assume there's no lethal bloodlust available or anything. He doesn't get it. I'm 
But why would you play the hounds first if you wanted brawl? That's what I don't understand here. But the shadow word should be enough. It's probably better than brawl anyway. If you go Earth Elemental, I haven't then there's no Alex Strazer or the Grand Slam next turn. Take the shadow word. Blow up some minions. I think that Brawl would probably count the number of minions on the board, so... Realising you're ahead on minions isn't going off you Brawl, I guess. Anyway, he sticks a board of some sort. It can be breathed away. And now, High Priest Amet, with Soul Mirror in hand, and it does apply if used. So should Jing play the Grand Slam here? Then Yu Yi would have a bunch of seven health minions, although whether that's any use or not remains to be seen. But Dragon Queen puts a lot of damage on the board. But he knows that there's a Galakon, it's a level two, so would kill two minions if Galakon did. These things need to avoid the Amet or they're gonna get killed on the, the V Swing. And that wasn't the Grand Slam that was cast, not 4 3 5, so these should attack after they gain their health. And it will be able to finish off at least one of these opposing minions. Wow. And that's almost. Yeah, Jing shuffles around in his chair again because those are basically the perfect attacks. going to enable Yu Ying to do so much good work here. <laughs> By so much good work, the ripple finishes off everything and Yu Ying has gone through every single good card in the Hunter's deck and come out on the other side. And that's not going to help. Fantastic if he'd done this a couple of turns ago and lived, but it's not going to help. And Yu Ying's going to take a 2-0 lead and he's going to have Priest into Warrior remaining. And Suning are in trouble. Well, I can see Lethal on the board. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Yeah, and Jing just gives it up, gets the end of that turn and realises that everything he just did was a nonsense. And it's 2-0. And difficult to see the way back. Still, if you want to sweep with any deck in Hearthstone right now, it's either this or Demon Hunter. And he hasn't got a Demon Hunter, so it's the Warrior. Taking on the Priest. If he wins, he's got a Druid to get through, which should be okay, and a Mirror Match, which we've seen anything can happen. Obviously, it's a 50-50, but it goes so many different ways to get to the winner. Jing throwing away... The 110 there. It's interesting to me. One of the ways to beat Priest is to just turn that into... A 4-12 and hit them with it. The other way is to have continuous pressure on the board and eventually combo kill the priest. The way the priest wins this is by running the warrior out of stuff. Basically keeping an eye on its own health total, keeping out of combo range and eventually having a turn where Usually, at least, it'll just play so much stuff the Warrior can't cope. Sometimes it won't even need to do that, and the Warrior will just get out to zero cards, and the game will end. And with that in mind, stuff like playing an Armour Smith for Armour, we will see much less of. We may see it just played for board at some point. We may even see it not played at all, so the Priest can't steal it for its own nefarious armour gaining ends.
doesn't hurt for the priest to keep putting pressure on. Sometimes, very rarely, the priest just kills the warrior. But more normally, this is how it goes down, how we're going to see now. With the warrior, every decision being super important. I would like to see a Sky Raider and a Bomb Warrior this turn, uh, Bomb Wrangler this turn. Other ways to view it, could play all of the one drops, is definitely an option. You'd like to kill and keep the spell lackey until you know which spell you need, because this game can go several different ways. Um, but keeping a Sky Raider. You would normally keep it to enable your Risky Skippers. But against Priest, that's not so important. There's some weird ordering going on here. I understand he's playing around Doomsayer, but... I want to know what Pirate I'm getting at the start of my turn. Well, mind games into... Oh, he's going to go for it. I didn't think he would. I was going to go with Mind Games Gromash being pretty ridiculous. I guess that's why he went for it, because it would have been pretty ridiculous. Pick up the cork on Elite means that Jing just has to start thinking about how he's going to proceed in this game. This could be a turn to Risky Skipper some bombs, you know. He gets so much damage done. He may wait until he can risky skip a double the sets of bombs. Certainly extra damage available if you want to go that way. Thing is, if it wants to develop, Jing doesn't have many other ways to take this. Corkin Elite to the face kind of lets Yu Ying off the hook a little bit when it comes to combo kills. But yeah, you've got to do something. I was I was sort of fumbling around there for a second wondering where he was going and the answer is you've got to do something. You can't let the priest keep having it their own way. That's where we've got to with it. Nineteen health. And these are the boards that Priest just dislikes. Tend to see it in rogue matches more than in warrior ones where first of all they don't have that much AoE, but lots of spot removal instead. But also you can't keep killing 1-1s. One Trading a full card into a 1-1 one -one is not going to get you there. But not trading a full card into a 1-1 one -one and the 1-1 one -one lives and hits you again and again and again until you do deal with it. And that's giving Yu Ying a bit of a headache here. I'd like to see him just hit the face into the core and see what lackey he gets. But I think time's gone too far for that. He may just have to throw out the shield now. Time rip. Same sort of deal. Alright, so this isn't a time for Risky Skippering. Jing has made this sort of sad, pathetic board that's actually really irritating. I'd like to see him play the Tolvir down and just rush one of these, turn it into a 2-1 or 2-2. Yep, stick some weapon out there as well and launch the most irritating face attack ever. Just see which lucky he gets before doing all that. Honestly, I just want to see him hit for four more and play out a Tolvir. And just this collection of nothing. And then later on he gets to play the Titanic Lackey onto a Bomb Wrangler and Risky Skipper and play cheap things that way and do loads of bomb damage. So I want to see this whole wide board of rubbish Challenge your opponent to have the breath. And then next turn, just...
bomb wrangle their face. This is a similar plan to that, obviously. Much harder to deal with his 2-5 than it would be a 2-3, so I understand the plan. I'd rather buff the Bomb Wrangler, but I can see that three bombs might just be enough anyway. Plus you don't want the Bomb Wrangler getting stolen, giving your opponent bombs, so maybe this is safer. He did do one less point of damage though. But... It's a headache for Yu Ying. He can't deal with the wide board again, but he's being challenged to nine points of damage now. This can't go on. Feels to me like Shield of Galakond is the only play. Maybe you play the Dragon Lackey first. You need to put something in the way here. Doesn't look good for you, Ying. He is, however, 2 0 up. So, same play as I was thinking of, except he's keeping the Draconic Lackey back because there are some good six drops for next turn. And obviously, he wants to play the Evolve. Before the 4 5 as the whole point is getting some taunts in the way here. Right, Jing. How does he plan to get through this? I thought you'd start by putting your face into it and seeing what lackey you get, but he's going to execute. Just falls through a lot of damage and again keeps this same horrible little board up. That Yu Ying is just slowly but surely succumbing to. How irritating! Fair play to Jing. This is kind of hard to just keep resisting every single turn playing the card that might beat you. But. He is doing. And now he's got to the point where it's like, okay, well next turn, I've got double skipper and a wrangler. So yeah, if you steal this wrangler and set up a little board with it, good for you. Because how on earth does anyone get out of this? And there's not a minion bigger than three attack on the entire board. When warriors play like rogues, this is what happens. And Yu Ying is far from impressed. This is where those of us who are less professional start wondering what to queue up next. Do you want the mirror? Do you want the druid? Personally, I want the mirror. I think the druid's less likely to get it done. Okay, well, that's a Hearthstone card. Great. You've got seven minions you need to kill, Yu Ying. Seven of them. That doesn't kill any. That's got worse. Uh huh. Well, you've generated a concede button. At last, it goes to two games to one. And Jing is back in this. Still with his warrior left, of course taking on the Druid or the Warrior for Yu Ying. He's going to go for the Druid first. This is a really difficult matchup for the Druid, for Spell Druid in particular. And it's down to that card, Risky Skipper. The deck tries to make a lot of early 2-2s, which are incredibly easy to deal with. And so, no surprise that this is favoured for the warrior. Jing throws the skipper and the weapon. Not what he's looking for. Let me just check his build, although for some reason my warrior deck lists have been a little bit scrubbledy. 
So, Tolvia seems to be the name of the game. I'm not sure I like that mulligan from Jing. By the way, you lose is to an early swarm. Let's see what his plan is. Usually when a, a really good player does a weird mulligan, it's because the caster doesn't understand. But for me, keeping the lance and the skipper would have provided a way to deal with a glowfly swarm. And you have other things to deal with, but you kill your opponent once you've dealt with that as the warrior. Maybe he just wanted more ways to kill. Looking for a Corsair Cash does more damage early. Um, not messing around with the skipper, actually getting the skipper from an anchor again saves time, gives you a chance to get your War More Challenger, which he's probably looking for. If you get War More Challenger, Inner Rage, Mercenaries against the Druid, the Druid does just fold up. Yeah, okay. This is fine. Yep. So he was looking for Corsair Cash. And keeping Skipper is too defensive. I think I can get on board with this now. It's been a little while since I warriored. Yeah, you can't just sit back and be defensive. You have to get the damage in. Being swayed by the fact I could see Yu Ying's hand. Looks like he's got to dump a card here, and the question is does he just want to dump a Moonfire, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a Moonfire his own face. Yes! I don't know if this is right or not, but it shows a bit of class either way. Um, when your opponent doesn't do anything as Warrior, they sometimes want to either cycle a Battle Rage just to try and get out of trouble, or do a very small Battle Rage. You normally don't worry about the Battle Rage, that Moonfire... If this was a rogue deck, should absolutely go face. You need every point of damage, for instance. But it's not. It's a druid deck. And doing 30 and doing 29 are almost equally the same. So that Moonfire was very nicely placed there from Yu Ying. Jing? I feel can just play another Corkon and smash face here. I think if you're not going to keep the stupid defensive game plan I was suggesting, which I'm now sure is wrong, this is how you play this. Just kill the Druid. Well, how often is Yu Ying dead next turn? Yeah, he's dead any time that there's Inner Rage and Rampage. Or Inner Rage and... Mercenaries. He hasn't got the inner age, he has the other those the other cards. How does Yu Ying win this? Wins it by playing a Mount Seller that can't be killed. Well this Mount Seller can be killed. Ten cards, so overflow would only draw one. I was wondering if he wanted to draw like two or three and overflow the rest, but nope. I think maybe his only chance here is to play the Glowfly Swarm and try and set up next turn lethal on Jing. I hope Jing doesn't have any way to deal with it. And he does have the Savage Raw, so it would be lethal. Oh, Jing gets a Corsair Cash. That's <laughs> three more damage. It's too short. It's too short. And he can't even try and Battle Rage into lethal because nothing's injured. Remember that Moonfire? That Moonfire is costing Jing a 2 in 21 chance of winning the game right now. Because he'd be able to cycle the Battle Rage and try and pick up one of the two Inner Fires. Inner Rages, which would win the game. That's a 10% saving. And the extra point of damage that Yu Ying took has made no difference. But does Jing want to read this as a bluff? If there's no Savage Roar... He's not dead to Savage Roar, should he trade. But would you ever trade here? I think you... He's decided he can't beat it. 
Feels it like there's a savage roar. Good luck to you. And, well, good luck indeed for you, Ying. Jing takes out the headset. He knows it's coming. Savage roar for a million damage here. I think it's 37, in fact. From you, Ying. And Suning fall to four and seven. Lucky future go to six and five. Tidy day's work from Yu Ying. 